Welcome to Chew on This, where we believe your health is in your hands right before it's in your mouth. When we come back, we'll be talking to Leslie Stoddard and Jenny Easley of GMO Free Idaho. GMO Free Idaho is raising awareness about genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, in our food system, one consumer at a time. GMO Free Idaho returns to the show to catch us up on recent legislation to require labeling of genetically modified foods in our supermarkets. If you want to know what you're eating, stay tuned to Chew on This. Welcome back. On today's Chew on This, Leslie Stoddard and Jenny Easley of GMO Free Idaho. Ladies, it's good to have you back in the studio. Good to be back. Thank you. Leslie, for our listeners who are new to the topic of GMOs or genetically modified organisms, can you define GMO and tell us why they're a concern in our food system? Absolutely. So genetically modified organisms are foods that have been modified with foreign DNA and there's two main types. The first is um, uh, seeds that have been modified to resist herbicide or seeds that have been modified to become a pesticide. And the problem is, is that they're untested, they're unlabeled, so we don't know when we're eating them. And consumers just simply um, aren't aware that we've been eating genetically modified foods since 1996. In addition to that, there are several health, um, excuse me, environmental concerns, such as cross-contamination, the reduction of biodiversity, and um, the increase in the use of herbicides and pesticides. And so we've formed this group to educate consumers and to um, hopefully pass legislation that will mandate the labeling of these foods. And Jenny, what's the basis for you and Leslie's work with GMO Free Idaho? What's your goal? Well, like Leslie said, a lot of people don't even know that they're eating them. And and when I learned about them three years ago, I didn't know that I was eating them. And so um, we both... Um, went on the same sort of path where we just uh, became very passionate about making sure people have the right to know. Our food industry isn't giving us the right to know. Our regulating agencies aren't giving us the right to know. So it's really up to us to inform each other. And so that's what GMO Free Idaho does is we educate people about uh, GMOs. We spread awareness and we're also pushing for legislation um, so that so that everybody in the supermarket can know what they're buying. Can you take us through the steps of how these foods come to be on the supermarket shelves, beginning with who's producing them and what the process is to uh, change the genetic composition of the foods and then what they're creating and then what what ultimately the products are? So... Um you know, it, it's really amazing to me. If you would have told me a few years ago that I would have cared who was producing America's seeds, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> um, and as it turns out, there's a handful of companies who are actually uh, controlling the majority of the seed supply, not just in our country, but in the world. So the chances that everybody is eating something that comes from, um, for example, Monsanto Company every single day is big, but but you don't know. You don't, you don't see that name Monsanto on your food product. Um, so the, the foods that have been modified mostly are soy and sugar, sugar beets and um, canola and um, I know I'm going to miss some big ones. Um, corn. Corn. <laughs> Thank you. Cotton seed. Right. So, um, so those products that contain uh, those ingredients or derivatives of those ingredients are what is modified. Um, there are several agencies 
that oversee the regulation of these kinds of crops, these n new crops, um, but none of them have any regulation uh, about the human safety aspect and, um, of it. So uh, they're regulated by the EPA because some of them are actually pesticides and registered as pesticides if they're a BT crop. Um, and they're regulated by different agencies, but none of the regulation has anything to do with the consumption of human safety consumption. So they're seeds grown for food or food product, but they are also registered pesticides. That's correct. So in the process of uh, modifying, they put the pesticide into the infrastructure of the seed so that pests will resist the crop and therefore they can grow more and they... That's correct. So um, like a BT crop, it's bacterial thuringiensis, and if a, a pest um, tries to eat that crop while it's growing in the field, any part of it, um, leaves or the crop itself, um, or in the case of corn, the corn itself, um, the pest dies. And so it's a genetic trait that is expressed in every cell of the crop itself. So it is registered as a pesticide with the EPA. Wow. Uh, on your website, gmofreeidaho.com, you have quite a few very surprising statistics regarding GMOs globally and locally here in Idaho. Can you share? Um, absolutely. So one of the statistics is that 80% um, of the foods on the average grocery store shelf contain genetically modified ingredients. This is either by what Jenny said, it's contained in um, processed foods that are derived from GMO crops. Um, sometimes it's the actual crop or it comes from the um, animals that we eat or the animal products that we eat because they're fed a GMO grain diet. Um, another statistic is that 60, over 61 countries around the world have either labeled GM foods or have banned the growth of them altogether. For example, Syria, um, just banned the growth of genetically modified foods or crops, and China has labeling laws. So that's very interesting that here in the States we've been denied that right to know. So um, a lot of countries don't even allow them to be grown, let alone just wanting them to be labeled, but accessible. Exactly. Um, another statistic on there is that in Idaho we now grow more genetically modified corn then we do potatoes. So Idaho's no longer the potato state, sorry. <laughs> now it's the genetically modified organism state. Right. Mm -hmm. And what is that corn usually being grown for here? For feed for animals? Um, mostly feed for animals, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and in this next year, we will see um, corn for human consumption, sweet corn being grown in the valley and um, on our markets. That's been approved uh, for consumption. So this is what I see when I'm driving around, like, between Marsing and Nampa. There's a lot of corn out there, and I notice they have little signs that say, you know, chem something, lot number. Sometimes. Um, sometimes when you see a genetics, when you see a genetics um, sign, um, it can be hybridized. It can be the the traditional method of hybridizing. Mm -hmm. um, those companies also call themselves genetics because they are dealing in genetics, but it's in a genetics within the its own species. Mm -hmm. The difference is that the GMO stuff is outside of its own species. But, um, but with uh, Idaho, the number of things being grown here, not only are we growing the genetically modified corn, but we also have the Roundup Ready uh, sugar beets, and we have the Roundup Ready alfalfa and the Roundup Ready corn. And so um, we're being exposed to an extraordinary amount of Roundup in our environment. Mm. In addition to that, I do want to state that Roundup um, originates from Idaho. In Southeast Idaho, we have the mines where they harvest the phosphates, phosphates and it's creating massive selenium waste and you know it's damaging our water supply. So Roundup is an Idaho product. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more to Leslie Stoddard and Jenny Easley about recent legislation for labeling of GMOs. Find out what countries will not allow U.S. exports containing GMOs across their borders and what states in the U.S. are leading the way for labeling laws. Stay with us. This is your host, Kim Metis, and you are listening to Chew on This, where we believe your health is in your hands right before it's in your mouth. If you would like to listen to Chew on This, but miss the live show on Radio Boise every Sunday at 5, 
You can go to ChewOnThisIdaho.com, where you can listen to recordings of past shows and find informational links for all our guests. If you're just joining us, my guests are Leslie Stoddard and Jenny Easley of GMO Free Idaho. GMO Free Idaho fights for your right to know what is in your food, educating consumers and lobbying for labeling of GMOs in the state of Idaho. If 80% of food and grocery stores contain genetically modified organisms, how can we educate ourselves to avoid them before these labeling laws that you guys are working for take effect? Um, the best ways to avoid genetically modified foods are to avoid the at-risk ingredients that we talked about. So corn, uh-huh, soy, soy, cottonseed oil, canola oil, sugar beets. Um, avoid those things altogether. Some Hawaiian papaya, zucchini, and yellow crookneck mm-hmm. squash is genetically modified. And now alfalfa also um, is GMO. So when you read labels, you want to look out for things like corn syrup and soy protein. And corn and soy are in almost every packaged food. I mean, mm-hmm. that's kind of the no-brainer. And then in addition, sugar beets, if, if the ingredient says cane sugar, it's cane sugar, correct, from Hawaii. But sugar beets are just labeled as sugar. So correct. is that how another way to watch for those? That's correct. Mm-hmm. And on our website, we have a list of um, ingredients that can be GMO, things that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Citric acid, vitamin mm-hmm. E, um, oftentimes come from corn. So those, those tend to be at-risk ingredients. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Another way to avoid genetically modified foods is to buy organic because for something to be certified organic, it cannot be a, a GMO seed. And then, of course, uh, you can purchase products that are non-GMO project verified. The non-GMO project is a third-party entity, nonprofit organization that tests the ingredients of these foods to verify that they do not contain GMOs or GMO contamination. And um, there's a huge increase in these products that we're seeing on our grocery store shelves, which is fabulous because it goes to show that we are seeing a shift and that the markets are changing. So you can look for that non-GMO project verified label when you're shopping. And it has a little orange butterfly. So I even found some things Costco recently that had that and we'll put a a copy of that I'll get the logo from you and we'll put it on the my blog so people can check in and see what that looks like and get a visual Mm -hmm. and start watching for it and there there is an application that you can also um, add to your iPhone it's uh, called the non-GMO shopping guide and it will tell you what ingredients to avoid and it will also tell you what products are non-GMO project verified oh that is cool yeah. Is that pretty new? I didn't hear about that. Uh, it's been it's been out for a while. Uh-huh. That's by uh, Jeffrey Smith and the Institute for Responsible Technology Center for Food Safety. Actually, oh, I know <laughs> Jeffrey Smith has <laughs> has that shopping guide. He That's where we buy it from. So okay, cool. Tell us about the perception of genetically modified foods around the globe. Who's banning them, and what you know? What are the Europeans saying about this? And why aren't we catching on? So 62 countries around the world either ban or label GMOs. And um, initially when the European Union decided to ban GMOs, uh, the, the biotech industry was very upset about that. And um, the United States actually went to the World Trade Organization to force uh, the European Union to accept GMOs. Um, Otherwise, it would be considered in violation of trade policy, international trade policy. Wow. So as a response to that, consumers demanded labeling in Europe. And so as a result, there are no very, very little GMO products on store shelves in Europe. um, But they do still have it in uh, animal feed and such because they uh, they continue to be forced by the World Trade Organization to accept it. Um, Some of the states have been successful in banning the growth. Some of the states in the European Union have been successful in banning the growth of GMOs. In fact, Southern Ireland just did that recently in like the last year. We're able to ban the growth. But yeah, there's countries all over the world. Some ban them outright. Some uh, just label them and um, and we really haven't here because of lobbying interests. And that's mm-hmm. the reason most people don't even know they're here. We probably lost a lot of money uh, not being able to sell our exports. 
Yeah, um, you know, we work directly with uh, farmer Phil Geertsen. I think we talked about him before when we were on, and he had an export market to uh, New Zealand for his alfalfa seed, and he lost his whole uh, export because they have a zero tolerance policy. Um, and and in the first year that we had uh, genetically modified canola, we lost what was it again? One hundred and three million dollars it was was 300 million dollars 300 million dollars and phil you have told me about him he's the alfalfa seed grower he doesn't want to be growing gmo alfalfa but because of the way things cross pollinate he can no longer um, certify his product as gmo free his seed stock became contaminated okay exactly he had spent his life developing his own seed variety and that was his livelihood, and he just lost everything after this contamination happened. Oh, that's horrible. So in the U.S., uh, most states have organizations like GMO Free Idaho who are lob- lobbying at a state level, uh, not even for the removal of these foods from the market, but simply for the transparency of labeling so we know what we're eating. Um, what states have made progress? Connecticut and Vermont are very close. We are a part of a national coalition for labeling. There are 37 member states currently. There are 22 that have introduced some sort of legislation in this state. Um, Even more states than that have found sponsors for bills, um, including us here in Idaho. We found a sponsor for us. Representative Matt Erpelding has agreed to help us by sponsoring legislation next year. So there's a lot of movement. The loss in California, the Prop 37 in California, spawned a coalition. There were already active activists in every state, but it brought us all together in a much more organized way. And you can find the coalition at righttoknow-gmo.org. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So Prop 37, for those of you who didn't follow, weren't following California politics or this GMO politics, was a, if you voted yes, you wanted labeling. If you voted no, you didn't. And we were all watching that race pretty tightly last November. They populated the counties, I think by like red and blue or something, as they came in with with their vote. And what I noticed, because I grew up in California, so I know all of the counties and who, what demographic lives in each county. And it seemed that the ag counties were like Central Valley, and they they voted against the labeling. So I wasn't down there watching the campaign that was subsidized by the agribusiness and other big food businesses, but I guess it was a $45 million ad campaign. So they mm-hmm. ran commercials on TV and what have you. And I'm sure that they threatened jobs and that kind of thing. So most people who voted no, that they didn't want labeling, were probably worried about their own livelihoods and watch too much TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interestingly, I just read that if um, if they had gone on the day of voting alone, Yes on 37 would have won because the Yes on 37 campaign was able to generate enough donations to start running ad campaigns at the very end. So people who voted in advance had only been exposed to, to the, the other side. Other side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of misinformation, for example, stating that it would increase food costs, um, which isn't true. It didn't increase the food costs in the European Union when they enacted labeling. And um, the truth is companies change their labels every three to six months. So what's the difficulty of adding a label that says this may contain GMO ingredients? Mm -hmm. What progress has GMO Free Idaho made since we last spoke several months ago? Lots. You know, we, we've we um, gathered activists across the state. Northern Idaho is very active. They're doing movie screenings, presenting. Um, we do have a statewide call every two weeks um, where if anybody across the state wants to get involved, they can message us, email us, and we'll give you the access information. And we can show you how to get um, uh, something going in your local area. And so we're also working on our legislation, which is very, very exciting. And we continue to hold booths, um, give presentations. For example, uh, this Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we're going to do a free screening of Genetic Roulette at New Leaf Healing Arts here in Boise. Um, And so we just continue to spread awareness. It's very exciting. We're growing. 
You're listening to Chew on This, where we believe your health is in your hands right before it's in your mouth. When we return, we'll talk more to Leslie Stoddard and Jenny Easley of GMO Free Idaho. Leslie has been on a personal mission recently, video blogging her travels as she navigates the dirty political waters, muddying the issue and finding new sparkling examples of personal responsibility along the way. Stay with us. Gardening is rewarding, relaxing, and done right can save you money on groceries and even your water and cooling bills. Gardening organically with nature and nutrition as guiding principles gives you the assurance that you aren't hurting your family or the environment with toxic chemicals and are actually improving the health, flavor, and pest resistance of all that you grow. Join the discussion on the best practices and techniques every Wednesday at 12 p.m. with Lindsay and Elisa on Talk Dirt to Me right here on KRBX 89.9 Caldwell, Boise. There's some modern... You're listening to Chew on This. Today, our guests are Leslie Stoddard and Jenny Easley of GMO Free Idaho. Leslie, what have you been up to on your personal mission against GMOs lately? I know I saw you on Facebook with these great day in the life blogs that you're obviously very embarrassed about, but I think they're (laughs) darling and very informative. Uh, You know, I was encouraged by by some people to do a 30-day video blog and totally out of my comfort zone. I'm getting the hang of it, but um, basically I just started documenting some of my daily activities, um, especially those activities that revolve around my um, nonprofit work. And so, um, for example, we interviewed Cliff uh, Metcalf of Cliff's Country Market out in Caldwell, Idaho, because we are making a um, mini documentary with James Hansen, who's a BSU film student. And so I had my iPhone handy, and um, I walked around the store and showed everyone his non-GMO options. I I talked about how Cliff is labeling the foods in his grocery store to as non-GMO if they don't contain GMO ingredients, and um, he also makes his own baked goods that are GMO free. So that's just an example of the things that I'm doing. So. so Cliff's a great example of one of the this the sparkling personal responsibility gems that you found along the way when he became educated. He found out. He said, what? Well, are you kidding me? And he became educated and he completely turned his whole store around. Yeah, Cliff is such an inspiration. Um, we're so pleased to have him in the Treasure Valley and so pleased to be able to work with him. And s- such a shining example. If every small grocer, um, you know, in at least one city looked at what Cliff was doing and, and, and implemented that program, it would make such a huge impact. Uh-huh. I'm hoping to have him on the show. So good. I'm waiting for a call back from him. Oh, he'll be here. Good. Great. So if people wanted more information about this topic, where could they turn? Are there any websites you can recommend um, or even movies? You said Genetic Roulette. it would be great to see that on when is it? Tuesday night? Uh huh. Tuesday night we'll be screening Genetic Roulette at um, New Leaf Healing Arts. Um, of course, you can go to our website, www.gmofreeidaho.com. Please follow us on Facebook. You know, there's some really great films you can watch. For me, it was Future of Food that turned me on to all of this. I saw that film in the fall of 2009, and it's what changed um, my life, actually. And so that's a great one. And we'll always be screening these things, um, these films, and continue to provide more information on our website. And the Coalition website has a list of movies that are good to watch, too. And we have a list of them on our website as well. But um, there there are just a lot of good films to watch that, that are listed on that righttoknowgmo.org. Great. So how can people get involved with you guys volunteering? And how can they get a hold of you for speaking events and booths and other educational services that you offer? Well, we're always looking for more volunteers. <laughs> this is a full-time job. But please email us at info at gmofreeidaho.com or message us on Facebook, and there's plenty for you to do. It sounded like earlier when we were talking, you were kind of in the market for like a volunteer coordinator because you have people that show interest, but gathering everybody and finding out what their strong suits are and then placing them into particular um, jobs or or for upcoming events is kind of hard to manage. It is, absolutely. You know, Jenny is a full-time mom, and she also works. I work 40 hours a week and have other things going on, but we love our activists. You know, we love being activists, so this is a call to someone who can help us coordinate our busy um, (laughs) schedule with GMO Free Idaho and, and to help us implement more programs. Jenny and Leslie, thanks so much for coming in, and thanks for your diligent work 
in our state and local community. It's really important work. Thank, Thank you. you, Kim. It's always a pleasure. You can find more information about GMO Free Idaho at gmofreeidaho.com or like them on Facebook. You can also find information on the coalition and follow what's happening nationally with this topic at righttoknow-gmo.org. You can also find these links and listen to the audio recording of this and past shows at chewonthisidaho.com. If you like Chew On This, please go to Facebook and click the like button. I only have 86 likes and I'm starting to get depressed and somewhat obsessed about that. I don't know why that is. To get the word out to your friends and family and receive one posting a week when the newest show blog is updated. This is your host, Kim Metis, and you've been listening to Chew On This, where we believe your health is in your hands right before it's in your mouth. 